Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 655, 655. Monday, January the 7th, 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, I heard a number uh, bantied around this morning about, uh, there was supposedly a poll done on Fox News that 75% of the people want the border wall or border security. I don't know. That number seems a little bit high to me. A little bit high. I don't think it's that high. But I do believe that the majority of people are uh, support um, border security and want to see the situation resolved. Whether or not the majority of them are behind a government shutdown effort uh, as a way to get that done is probably uh, significantly less than that. But it's probably somewhere around 45-50%, I would think. So that's why we're in day 17 of the... Uh, uh, shutdown because <clears throat> at this point both sides obviously are seeing some numbers that they believe shows them that they are winning with their base on this issue they're not winning over the other side but neither care about that it's all about politics in the 2020 election so <clears throat> what the both sides are likely seeing because we are in day 17 is both sides obviously feel they're winning on the issue and that's why it will continue for at least another week. Um, it is, of course, uh, the president has obviously talked about the fact that there has been money. Uh, he could declare a national emergency and do something there. Um, yes, he can certainly do that. I, I, I don't know that that uh, necessarily increases the popularity of it. Uh, it would certainly um, probably accomplish what he wants because there is money that has already been appropriated uh, to the Pentagon or what have you. And a lot of that money is um, earmarked for the Pentagon. Like, here's the, you know, $50 billion, but the Pentagon doesn't necessarily say what that money is going to be going for because they like to keep a lot of it on hand for unforeseen situations that may come up. So the president can certainly tap into that money. There's also other money uh, from appropriations, money that has been appropriated to other agencies of the government. And I assume that Trump has got all of his uh, people who are heads of these agencies looking for however many millions or tens of millions of dollars, uh, maybe hundreds of millions, laying around that has not yet been earmarked for something that he can pull those resources. So I think that that's what you're going to be seeing over the next week is that you're going to see Trump most likely uh, because I don't think they'll get anything done this upcoming week. Uh, Congress is really not back in session again till Wednesday. Uh, they'll have a couple meetings. will probably go nowhere. I'm thinking that probably what will happen is that Trump will spend this week. I think that's why he was at Camp David over the weekend, uh, probably saying, okay, by Thursday, I want you to come in here and give me a number and tell me how much money that you can come up with has already been appropriated that I can use to uh, continue border wall construction or the fence or whatever he wants to build. And I think that by the weekend, uh, next weekend, he'll have that number. And I expect that what he will do then <clears throat> is that he will announce uh, that he's going to get the money from these other places, money that's already already been appropriated. He, Whether or not he formally declares a national emergency, I don't know. He doesn't really have to declare a national emergency to tap into those funds. Um, and there are political ramifications to doing that. So I don't think that's what he'll do. I think that he'll probably, by the end of next week, or this coming week, by the end of this week, in about seven days, he'll have the numbers. He'll know exactly how many billion are there that he can tap into. If it's somewhere in the three, four, five, maybe billion dollar range, I think he'll say, okay, good, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and start tapping into that money. Let's get it done, at which point, uh, he will most likely sign the remaining appropriation bills, essentially reopen the government, um, and he'll come out and take credit for that. He'll come out and take credit for ending uh, the crisis by uh, funding the government and saying, basically claiming victory, saying, I won, I found the money for my wall, I got the money, I'm good, I'm going to build the wall, and uh, I'm going to end the government shutdown, and that's how he'll try to play it uh, to win on the issue, which is a very good move, at which point the Democrats will say, well, you know, we have to approve any money or whatever. Not really, uh, I've heard some of them say that, but once they've appropriated money, the money is appropriated. Now, if he was talking about new money that would have to be appropriated, then there's probably an issue there. I still expect the Democrats will 
take it to court. But by the time it works itself through the courts, by that time, Trump will have already um, tapped into the money, um, signed deals for the companies that are going to do the building, and the project will be underway, and the Democrats will just try to use this, <clears throat> knowing good and well that they'll actually never get legal relief from it, but it will at least ways help them save face and uh, play to their political base as well. So that's how I see both sides trying to find victory in this situation. Uh, they'll both come out and claim victory, and uh, I expect in the next 7 to 10 days this will all probably be over, and I think that that's what both sides will do. We'll see how I did on that production here in about a week. An Ocasio-Cortez supporter has called for Steve Scalise to be sniped. That means a sniper shooting him. Uh, killed, in other words, uh, on her Twitter feed. Another commenter says that... Uh, Quote, she's got better aim than James Hodgkinson. That's for sure. And of course, James Hodgkinson was the shooter who fired on the uh, Republican members of Congress at the uh, softball game where Scalise was shot before. This, uh, her account has not been suspended and neither of these two commenters have been, uh, their comments have not been removed nor have their accounts been suspended. This uh, was all started by um, Scalise responding to Cortez's um, statement that she wants a 60 to 70 percent tax cut. And uh, Scalise responded to that, and that's what brought on these comments. So this just goes to show you many things here, obviously, that if you're on the left, uh, on Twitter or Facebook or any of those social media sites, you can threaten members of Congress with uh, murder. Um, you can do all those sorts of things, and you can get away with it. Uh, you know, if this was a Republican or someone else opposed to the Democrats who made a statement like this about Pelosi or Schumer or anyone like that, or certainly Obama or Hillary or anyone like that, uh, their account would have been shut down immediately and probably would have been banned for life. But it doesn't work that way uh, when you're making these threats against Republicans. So. There you go, uh, a Ocasio-Cortez supporter calling for Steve Scalise to be sniped because he disagrees with her position on the tax, uh, tax increase of 60 to 70%. Uh, Cortez also uh, states on her social media that she would like to see a 100% misogynist tax. A 100% misogynist tax. Tax. She's Looney Tunes, my friend. Looney Tunes. And, you know, when she was just running for office or even as a congressperson elect, um, we could kind of let most of this stuff go is that she's just nutty. But that maybe once she was actually sworn in, that she would uh, straighten out a little bit and become uh, a little more level headed, a little more reasonable, a little more common sense, and a little more, a little more politically astute. But obviously, this is not the case with Ocasio-Cortez, uh, with uh, Marty Feldman eyes. She's not capable. She's not capable of rational thought. And she leads a band of 95 radical left-wingers who now are the most influential caucus in the Democratic House of Representatives. Good luck, Nancy. Law enforcement official Roscoe Davis, Roscoe Davis, has been sending out tweets over the last couple of days where he is laying out the ties between the Benghazi attack uh, to the Clinton investigation <clears throat> and also to the Clinton Foundation. He says that Flynn was targeted because he knew too much about the Benghazi operations. He says that on July the 25th of 2012, that Taliban fighters in Afghanistan shot down a U.S. Army CH-47 helicopter with a new generation Stinger missile. These Stinger missiles were intended to go to Syria. Senator Magoo 
was working with the Rotten Reverend Clinton and her State Department to move weapons through Libya into Syria. Um, according to Mr. Davis, the EOD team identified the um, from parts of that Stinger missile that hit the that hit the helicopter. They identified some of the parts from that uh, missile, uh, and there was a piece of metal from the missile that still had the entire serial number on it. So they were able to trace back this Stinger missile to where it came from, and it tracked back to a, a lot of weapons that had been signed out by the CIA in early 2011 that were meant to go to anti-Gaddafi forces in Libya. Through a contact of Senator Magoo named Mark Turi, who we just talked about a few videos ago. Turi, on behalf of Senator Magoo and the Rotten Reverend Clinton State Department and the CIA, sold billions of dollars in U.S. weapons to al Qaeda to assist them in the overthrow of Gaddafi. But it appears that the Taliban was able to receive, come into uh, possession of, 50 to 60 of those Stinger missiles. They're very effective. <coughs> not just against helicopters, but they're very effective against um, aircraft, all types of aircraft, including civilian commercial airliners. Davis says that Christopher Stevens was put into Benghazi to clean up the mess after it was, di after it was discovered by al Qaeda. after it was discovered that al Qaeda obtained the Stinger missiles and other U.S. arms. These al Qaeda guys were the ones that attacked the embassy that killed um, Stevens and three other Americans, according to Davis. He also says that Stevens was working for the Clinton Foundation in Benghazi. He says the Rotten Reverend Clinton issued the stand-down order after the embassy and Benghazi was attacked. He says that the Rotten Reverend Clinton lied to, Ron, to Rand Paul when she said she didn't know about weapons moving through Libya. The Rotten Reverend Clinton, according to Davis, made millions of dollars on the gun running operation, the, on the guns, the weapons that were moved between USAID and the Clinton Foundation. Mr. Davis says that Flynn knew all about it. And we know that because a report that he filed that the DIA filed the day after Benghazi, after the attack. They filed a document, which you can read, which clearly lays out that they knew that there was things going on there involving the movement of weapons. Flynn was the head of the DIA. He would have known every bit of it. And that is very likely why he was targeted by the Obama administration and set up by Mr. Halper, <clears throat> by Mr. Halper and Mr. Potato Head, John Brennan, and the Hillary Clinton State Department and the Obama administration. So, just more evidence, more crimes, more big crimes, more cover ups, more lies from the Rotten Reverend Clinton, the Obama administration, and the entire apparatus. Well, we have Joe Hoft at the Gateway Pundit writing an article saying that the plot to take down Trump began right, uh, right after it became clear that he was going to be the GOP nominee, which, of course, that was the end of April of 2016. And, of course, that is exactly when Mr. Potato Head, John Brennan, set up the six agency task force. Peter's been stroking us was also on that part of that six agency task force set up by Mr. Potato Head. Should also be noted that in the most recent interview that I saw with Papa Galopoulos, uh, not probably the most recent, but the interview he did with Tracy Beans, 
uh, he talked about this a bit, and he said, you know, a lot of people were talking about that this whole thing, uh, the Spygate thing, it all got started in the summer, you know, mid to late summer of 2016, around the time of Operation Crossfire Hurricane, and all these other events that happened, and then the FISA pay, Carter Page warrants, uh, and all those things, including the FISA on him as well. But Papa Galopoulos says in the interview with Tracy Beans that based on what was going on with him personally and the look at the date and times that these things were happening to him while he was uh, in London and various other places in Europe, Papa Galopoulos is speculating that again that uh, these operations were going on in the spring of 2016, not the summer. Again, that fits perfectly into the time frame of the multi-agency or six-agency task force set up by John Brennan, which I pointed out probably, what, a year ago, would, uh, would be the place to start looking if you want to find the origins of who and, and uh, who was behind uh, the original plot to take down Trump and who the players were, when it was all going down, why it was all going down, all those answers... Uh, and, and who is part of the collaboration, all those answers would be found if you start, uh, not necessarily start there, but because it was things going on in 2015 as well. But as far as the plot that eventually evolved into Operation Crossfire Hurricane and the things that had to happen before they could produce the what they consider evidence for Operation Crossfire Hurricane, that was all set in, into motion much earlier, back in the spring, just as I lay out in my timeline. If you look at my timeline, my Towergate timeline, you'll see that I place the Brennan Six Agency Tax Force as being put into play uh, somewhere around the end of March or early April of 2016, which coincides perfectly with what uh, Jim Hoff is alluding to. It uh, matches up perfectly with what Papa Galopoulos has said, and it matches up perfectly with a lot of the other events, uh, because if you look at the events on my timeline, you'll see that everything seemed to have start as far as the actual, you know, uh, actions on the ground, the the uh, infiltrators into the campaign, uh, the FISA warrants, uh, the dossier, all these things, even the uh, hacked, alleged hacked DNC server, the Russian narrative. Uh, Trump's boy Kramer uh, meeting with the Ukrainian woman over in Ukraine to generate the backstory. All these things. Nellie Orr being brought in, uh, uh, Fusion GPS being brought in. All these things came from something that happened a few months earlier. And that would have been the Six Agency Task Force, which essentially created what would later become the evidence, if you want to call it that, that would be used <clears throat> to open the investigation. They created the, they manufactured the evidence through the six agency task force and the intelligence apparatus, and then they handed it off to the FBI uh, as actual evidence or intelligence to begin the counterintelligence operation, which then morphed itself into a criminal investigation and gave us Uncle Bob. That's basically what happened. John Bolton has moved the goal post. Now he says that we can't get out of Syria until we provide protection for the Kurds <laughs> before we can leave Syria. Well, we'll never be able to guarantee protection for the Kurds. And he knows that. As you know, I stated when Trump appointed Bolton that it was a huge mistake. Huge mistake, unless Trump just likes keeping his most vicious adversaries close to him. Maybe that's what he likes to do. Maybe Trump likes to bring up people who are the most opposed to him <laughs> to try to bring his enemies as close as he, as he can to him. I don't know. But, um, you know, we have Trump today, basically, on the same day that Trump is telling reporters that uh, he has every intention on holding to his timeline of about four months to have the troops back from Syria the very same day and the very same time we have Bolton over in Israel on his knees polishing Netanyah Netanyahu's knob polishing the knob 
telling him what he wants to hear, and then giving his own press conference saying, well, we're not getting out of Syria until we can guarantee protection uh, for the Kurds. That's not what Trump said. Apparently Bolton and Trump are not on the same sheet of music. Trump needs to stick to it. And in four months, he needs to say, John, Mike, I gave you four months to wrap up things uh, with uh, uh, get the last uh, remaining element of of ISIS or Al Qaeda uh, killed uh, to put in place a plan with our other allies on how to protect the Kurds so that I could bring the troops home. That's what I said four months ago. That's why I task you with. Today's the day. It's been four months. Now I'm issuing the order the troops are coming home. And if Bolton says, but wait a minute, wait a minute, we still haven't achieved the objective, uh, uh, Mr. President. I would say, well, I'm sorry, John, but uh, I gave you a time frame, and I said, this is what you need to do. This is how much time you need to do it. Time's up. We're leaving. We're coming home. And if Bolton objects, fire him. Maybe he'll quit instead. Who cares? The sooner he's gone, the better. But don't put it past uh, Bolton. I imagine that uh, part of the conversation he and Netanyahu had on Sunday was the... Um, laying out some sort of a false flag operation which would be carried out by Mossad, working with Saudi intelligence, uh, working with some other uh, players in the region, probably some rogue elements of the CIA, um, that they'll probably pull off some sort of a false flag gas attack, blame it on Assad, because ultimately what Bolton wants and what Israel wants is for us to go in and take out Assad. It has nothing to do with protecting the Kurds. They don't give a damn about protecting the Kurds. I remember, uh, I remember when uh, Bush 41 pulled the rug out from underneath the Kurds. I remember when Bush 43 pulled the rug out from underneath the Kurds. Bolton was in both of those administrations. And he didn't seem to have a problem with it then. Didn't give a shit about the Kurds then because he doesn't give a shit about the Kurds now. Never did, never will. It's not about the Kurds for Bolton. It's about Israel and about him maintaining uh, a position with one of the various think tanks that pay him to go out and sell war and chaos on behalf of the Israelis. That's what Bolton is. He's an Israeli war salesman working on the, from within the um, framework of the U.S. government or these private uh, institutions that are uh, contractors to the U.S. government. That is who Bolton is. That's what he does. And that's why I say the sooner he's gone, the better. And if he does launch a uh, false flag attack, a gas attack. <clears throat> I do hope that uh, Trump doesn't buy into it and bite on it. I hope he calls it out for what it is. They've still never conclusively proved whether or not it was Assad who was behind the previous gas attack that he was accused of. But no one in the right mind believes he was. Why in the world would, would Assad, who was winning the war, cross what was specified Specifically, if you use chemical weapons, that will cross the red line. So what does he do? He allegedly uses chemical weapons. Why would he do that? He was winning. Makes no sense. He would have to be a dum-dum to do that. And he's not a dum-dum. I'll never believe that Assad had anything to do with that chemical weapons attack. And who came in right after that? The White Hats, the White Helmets. And who did the investigation? <laughs> no honest players, I can assure you of that. We don't get the truth about any of those events that happened in Europe. Not the shoot down of the, uh, of the airliner, uh, not, the chemical not the chemical attack, none of these things. We never get the truth because people like Bolton make sure we don't. He is the enemy. Make no mistake about it. Well, many of you know who Tom Steyer is. He's this nutcase. I believe he's from either uh, Washington or Oregon or California. He's this billionaire nutcase left winger that pumped a ton of money into the 2018 elections. Midterms. Bought a few seats, I'm sure. Now he's put over $6 million into an ad campaign that's now running in Iowa calling for Trump's impeachment. So he's running $6 million worth of ads in Iowa, just as a lot of these Democrat presidential hopefuls 
are showing up in Iowa to uh, give speeches. And it's probably putting some of them in a tough position. So this guy is just a total nut. And uh, some people say he's going to throw his hat in the ring, and I hope he does. Because what this guy needs is, is a plenty and plenty of public attention. He needs as many people as possible to focus on him and listen to what he says. Just long enough for people to realize that this guy is nuts. Nuts. Okay. This is an issue I really don't want to talk about. It's an issue I'd prefer just to ignore. It's just one of those things I just... But I kind of feel like I should talk about it because there's so much of this stuff out there uh, in the blogosphere, on YouTube. It's just everywhere. It's just impossible to avoid. I know a lot of people watch this stuff, believe this stuff, it, you know, believe what you want to believe or whatever. But <clears throat> it's this idea that Every time I go to YouTube, my homepage pops up. There's got to be half the videos got to be about military tribunals. Oh, they're happening. Military tribunals are underway. Military tribunals are going to be happening. Well, I've been hearing this for over a year. Over a year. And whether or not you want to believe that uh, there are military tribunals going on or they're going to go on or whatever, you can, you know, again, that's just, you know, people want to believe that stuff. It's fine. I've... Yeah, everyone, you know, I'm all for people believing what they want to believe. I, I'm not going to beat people up for their beliefs or anything like that. I mean, you know, it's it's a free country, right? But I'm going to give you my 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 take on this. First, I will say that I believe that there is a absolute zero chance that there are military tri tribunals happening right now. I believe there's an absolute zero chance that there's going to be any military tribunals as it relates to uh, you know, going after people in the Obama administration for the Spygate conspiracy. I don't believe uh, that's going to happen at all. Typically, military tribunals are, are reserved for crimes that occur on the field of battle. Uh, that's typically what you see a military tribunal used for. But there's a lot of other things to think about here, if you just stop and think about this for a minute. Um, first of all, I don't believe that the military even if the president ordered military tribunals on Obama, Clinton, Comey, Lynch, Strzok, Page, Brennan, Clapper, the whole nine yards, there's probably close to 100, maybe 200 people, 300 people involved in this entire criminal conspiracy. The idea that you would even get the military to agree to hold military tribunals for these types of things, which are generally prosecuted, quite honestly, by the Department of Justice uh, through a special prosecutor or something like that, I just don't see it that the military would ever do it. Um, I don't believe it's possible that you could round up uh, people of the status of Obama, Clinton, Brennan, Clapper, all these people. That you round these people up, they'd mysteriously just disappear and no one would miss them. And we would none of us would know about it. That You could keep this secret. That's pretty crazy. The idea that you could keep uh, these types of things, something like the secret, if it were secret military tribunals going on somewhere... Uh, you know, with these people. It's just This is all just so far in the realm of fantasy to me that I have a rough time believing that people do believe it. But again, as I've said before, I think a lot of times if people want to believe things, they'll find a way to justify it in their mind, which is fine. If you really, if this really is what gets you excited every day and you wake up as, ah, military tribunals. If this is what's keeping you going from day to day, is this hope that this is happening or it's going to happen, then you know, God bless you, man. I mean, keep keep rolling with it, man. Keep watching all those videos. But I'm here to tell you, uh, is you look, look, look right here. A year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 50 years from now, you will never hear a single word or there'll be never be any truth at all of military tribunals against the deep state perpetrators regarding the Spygate scandal. Not going to happen. It'll never happen. Okay, that's just what I'm telling you, right? It's just not going to happen. No such thing. It's just, it's a fantasy. There are no military tribunals. There will be no military tribunals over this issue with the Spygate. You will not see Obama, Clinton,
Brennan, Clapper, and all these people taken to Gitmo and tried for in a military tribunal for war crimes or for whatever they did, treason, whatever. It's just not going to happen, okay? If they're going to be prosecuted, it's going to be through uh, the Department of Justice, through a special counsel, uh, doing an investigation, appointing a, a, a grand jury, bringing in people, getting testimony, getting evidence, and then indicting the people who are criminals. That's the way that this will go, if it goes at all. <clears throat> but let's just think about the ramifications of what if it were true? What if it were true? What if it were true that they're right now uh, have rounded up uh, Obama and Hillary and the Bushes and all these people and they're all right now in uh, Gitmo waiting for their military tribunal, waiting for their trial to start or if they're about to be uh, taken in for military tribunals. Let's just think about that for just a moment. What would happen when eventually all these elitist people start missing? Pretty soon people realize, hey, what happened to Obama's? Where's the Clintons? Where's the Bushes? What happened to Brennan and Clapper? They've all apparently disappeared. Because eventually some people will start figuring out that this entire group of some of the most elitist snobs in the country are suddenly missing. Somebody, there's a lot of people working down at Gitmo that would recognize them. You think it isn't going to be leaked? If the Rotten Reverend Clinton and Cheney and Bushes and those people are walking around in orange jumpsuits or, 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 or swinging from nooses in the uh, courtyard down, down in uh, Gitmo? You think that information isn't going to be uh, learned about? Or what, they're just going to do it and hope everybody forgets these people ever walked the planet or existed? No, we're going to be missing those people one way or another, okay? So this is one reason why it's completely insane, okay? But think about what would happen if we actually did have uh, these military tribunals. That would play right into everything that the radical lefties say about Trump. He would be playing right into their hands. He is a crazy dictator uh, like a Hitler who's going after his political enemies and not just to get them indicted where we actually can see the evidence play itself out uh, we can read the indictments we can uh, see the evidence we can see the court hearings no 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 it's all gonna be done with secret military tribunals my friends this would throw the country into massive chaos complete civil unrest probably civil war uh, the markets would tank uh, the stock market would crash, the economy would go into a complete tailspin, there would be chaos, the country would be practically ungovernable, the entire political system would be stressed to the point where it may be damaged beyond any repair. The consequences of something like that, if it were to actually happen, would be absolutely politically, economically, financially, in every way you can think of, complete, it would throw this country into complete nowheresville. We would go into a, a vor vortex spiral that we would probably never recover from, certainly not in any of our lifetimes. It would be a death knell to the Republic. It would be an absolutely stupid move beyond comprehension. The military would tell the president this, every advisor he's got would tell the president this, and he certainly must be intelligent enough to know that this is simply not something you would ever do. It's a complete fucking hoax. I love you to death, friends, who believe it, and God bless you. If you enjoy watching these videos, this is what really gets you excited, you want to believe in this, go right ahead, love you to death, and I, it's not, not a personal criticism against you. I'm just telling you, giving you a rational, reasonable, uh, common sense opinion of exactly the reality of what we're talking about here, because this is not a joke. I want to get to the bottom. I'm going to hold the people accountable. But as long as we're counting on the mystery, the mystery and the plan, remember Sessions was the plan before, then Mueller was a white hat, and, and Rodenstein was a white hat, and Sessions had the secret plan. The, the secret plan changes every day. You have 50 different people telling you what the plan is. They even can't agree on what the plan is. And now it's military tribunals. Actually, people doing videos right now telling you that they're already happening, that these people have already been wound up. Have you seen Bush lately? Well, no, but I haven't seen Bush ever. Have you seen Clinton lately? No, but I haven't seen Clinton ever. How would I know who these people are? But I'm absolutely guarantee that they're not in Gitmo. So, again, God bless you all uh, who, who enjoy this type of, you know, uh, entertainment. It's, it's fine. It's, it's all dandy. But I'm telling you, you can go back and watch this video. Video Towergate Day number 655. 
January the 7th, 2019. You can come back and watch this video five years from now, ten years from now, a hundred years from now. You will find that on this day I told you the truth. No military tribunals ain't happening, ain't gonna happen. Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you all. Have a good night.